All right, welcome to part two of this week's Yawa. Uh, if this is your first time to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button, smash the thumbs up because smash is a word that almost all YouTubers use, so we thought we'd try it. Smash it. Smash it. Which we just watched <sighs> The Emperor's New Groove with our little boy, Aiden. <laughs> Smash it, Smash with, a it with a hammer. That's the only thing I can think of. And if you know what I'm talking about, put it in the comments below if you've seen Emperor's New Groove. It is actually a pretty funny movie. Bourbon of the evening, Weller Antique 107. And I'm drinking uh, stuff. fizz, I think. Some kind of fizz. Some seltzery drink. Since they don't have my Corona refrescas until next year, I was told. Yeah, big bummer. So I'm, I'm making do. So we have a lot of really good questions and I wanna start with this one because we talk about nail trimming a lot and we talk about developing good habits with your dogs and anything your dog is doing consistently, they're conditioning themselves to, and all of that goes into helping answer this question from Andrew Hotzman. Nail hey, Andrew. Nail trimming is a nightmare. Help. Ooh, no fun. At almost 60 pounds, putting her between my legs and her staying and not mouthing my hands and arms doesn't work. I've played with her paws since day one and she is fine as long as the clippers or grinder are not out. Mm. She is stubborn and I have spent almost an hour to get two paws done. Any tips? Well, first of all, I can say um, our go-to, I think, and for most of the gals that work for us, the go-to would be the method that we show most of the time with your puppies. It's a really easy way to get started. And if you can maintain that and or develop that properly, it's a, it's a fun way to do it. Puppies lay in there right there with you. You get to pet them, love on them, trim their nails. They enjoy it. You enjoy it. Everybody enjoys it. But... The fact of the matter is it doesn't work for all dogs and uh, we and get to see that firsthand. it's hard to start that process out when the dog is closer to 60 pounds. Um, it sounds like you've done a lot of the groundwork of, you know, having the dog be comfortable messing with their paws. But even from a puppyhood on, doesn't it say that? Or no? I've played with her paws since day one. Yes. Okay. Okay. But she's not okay with the grinder or the tr trimmer getting brought out. Is the grinder and trimmer being brought out? Is that a new thing? This is a great question and it may be um, a good way to reach out to us via Patreon too. We're going to try and give some feedback here, but if you're still having struggles, it might Patreon, be good to see your nail trimming session. Yeah. So maybe we can give you just a little tip. It's going to help, but it's patreon.com slash standing stone kennels um, where you can sign up there and then send us videos of what, to, uh, what's going on there. The most powerful tool that we have to offer you is not our knowledge, not what we're talking about here, but our ability to read training sessions and read dogs and give direction on where you should go. So continue. Sorry for so rudely interrupting. Continue. We were just talking about some tips or tricks to help you with the nail trimming. Okay. So some dogs, like we were saying, you know, really have an adverse reaction to the clippers, to the grinder, um, and laying on their back, they feel vulnerable. It sounds like you've done all the, you know, groundwork and right things, but sometimes just standing them up and, you know, picking their paws up one at a time is a different method, a different technique to try where they don't feel quite as vulnerable because they're all up on all fours. Uh, we did a video that I shot. Um, I was doing the video, Ethan was videoing it with Quest with nail trims and different techniques, different methods that you could try. One, laying them on her back and two, having her stand up. Um, we do have a playlist on all of our nail trimming videos Ooh, that we've done. Fantastic, yeah. We do have a playlist. So it's a good thing I mentioned. Going through some of those videos, seeing some of the other techniques that we use, seeing how we work through nail trims with different dogs and how the actual process goes. Um, but it sounds like just getting your dog used to the grinder and desensitizing them even with Thunder, we did that where, you know, he was a little unsure of that grinder. So you just turned the grinder on and held one end of it, not the grinding end, but the other end where he could still hear it and feel it kind of vibrating a little bit up against his leg, up against his chest, um, kind of just bumping him with it, saying, hey, this is doing nothing. Don't freak out about it. Get over it and kind of desensitizing him to that. Yes. And I would say the other side of it is people that are watching that maybe didn't try and lay that groundwork and are struggling at the same point with a dog that's in that too big to handle kind of range, the standing up position ends up being a lot easier for me um, when I have a dog that's struggling. But we have our table and we have the ability to 
uh, tether them essentially to one end. So they're hooked on a chain so they can't go anywhere aside from standing right there. And then we have the ability to work with each paw individually and a little more control or a little different type of control. And sometimes that works drastically better for some dogs, um, but it's definitely worth a try. For sure. And letting us see exactly what's going on in a video on Patreon would be even better. So next question from Kyle Bonestall. Really enjoy your videos. I'm getting a German wire hair pointer around like Thanksgiving. Congratulations. I've decided on DT Systems e collar. I see Good you guys. Way to go. Yeah. I see you guys use all their models. My dog will be duck hunting, grouse and pheasant hunting. Grouse and duck hunting will be in Minnesota, and pheasant hunting will be mainly South Dakota. Just not sure which model to get. Thanks. So I wanted to answer this question because it's a theme right now. I've been getting this question emailed, texted, Instagram messaged, phone calls, all the things about how to decide which e collar to get. So I thought, why not answer that question in a Yawa? So I thought you were going to jump in there. I was just help. pouring. Yeah, I saw that and pouring and pouring. I was slow pour. Um, so a there's a lot of different pour. options. Okay. And I guess the two big things that I ask people to let me know what they're interested in before making a recommendation is one, are you interested in your collar having a beeper? My recommendation would be based on what you've explained that your collar has a beeper. Yes. Now I know you're going to be duck hunting as well. So you aren't going to necessarily be using the beeper portion of the collar in the duck blind or anything, but in the grouse woods or the thick cover in South Dakota or locating your dog, whether you just can't see them or hearing when they go on point will be super beneficial. So decide if you want a beeper. And then next is decide if you want your collar and your transmitter to both be rechargeable. Um, DT Systems has quite a few models that the collars are all rechargeable, but then the transmitter itself, some of them are rechargeable and some of them take a nine volt battery. And a lot of times using like the wrap 1450 that takes a nine volt, we'll actually use the rechargeable nine volts um, that plug in and then we can switch them out. So we're not having to throw nine volts away all the time, but then you've still got um, a battery that you are having to replace every once in a while. It's not super frequent. Ethan, when he's guiding, he's pushing that button a lot. Using the collar, every time you're using it, you're, you know, draining the battery a little bit. And I would say that those collar, the transmitter lasts at least two weeks per yeah, battery. Yeah, one to two. I usually change it on the weekly just to make sure because I don't ever want to be. Yeah, I don't ever want to be in that situation where I'm in the field and people are paying me to run dogs and not screw stuff up. Um, if I'm hunting, I pretty much only change. It's like, ah, oh, we're running through the field. It's like, ah, dang, the battery died. And then I go change it. Um, but I change it drastically more often when I'm guiding. That's still only about once a week. Yeah. And Ethan and I, we really like the 1450 for hunting, mm -hmm. um, especially in South Dakota. It can handle up to three dogs with one transmitter, which is nice. Yep. It has the beeper as well as vibrate, which I love collars that have a vibrate feature. And then it also has continuous and momentary stimulation. Now, when we're training dogs in the kennel, on the daily, we're using the H20 1820 series, which is both the transmitter and the collar are rechargeable because we're using them to train dogs constantly. They're getting used from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. pretty much. Um, so if we were using batteries, we'd be going through a lot of batteries, changing them a lot. So being able to plug them in is super beneficial. And those collars also handle up three dogs and have vibrate continuous um, and momentary stimulation. You could even say stellar beneficial. Doesn't work quite as well as a stellar sea lion, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck on that, huh? Oh yeah, it's a cool name. Um, so I, I'm going to throw just a little bit of a twist in here because. Uh, twist it. Twist it. You are looking for the one color to rule them all. And I'm going to say that if you ultimately, if you want the tools that are going to be best for the individual tasks, you probably honestly going to want to look at multiple collars. One thing that DT does, and if you are looking for this, you need to, uh, first of all, anybody who doesn't know that's watching right now, we have an online store. That online store has all of the training equipment, almost all of the training equipment that we recommend and or custom make for folks just like you. 
standingstonecandles.com slash store, or go to our website, click the store link. Um, it's divided out into all kinds of different categories categories and or brands. If you're looking for something specifically from Coranda or our easy lead products that's made by Standing Stone or DT Systems or Climb or anything else that you could think of, you've got brands there as well. Now, that being said, um, if it were me and I was solely duck hunting, I would be using an 1800 a series collar being the H2O 1820. That would be my go-to, both rechargeable, great signal strength, simple, easy to operate collar unit. If Nick, continuous, vibrate, and then you have vibe plus stem, which you might as well just cut that button off. You don't need to use it. But the rest of the unit, stacked. And the transmitter is going to float if you drop it in the pond. 100% it is. Um, my next option then would be close between the 1450 and the SPT 2430 series. Now, the SPT is like their Cadillac series. It has all the features, has all the things. And if that SPT came in a three dog unit, that would be the only unit that I would use. Because it does not, I utilize the benefits of a three dog unit in the 1450. If the 1450, if the SPT series, excuse me, had a three dog collar, I would use it exclusively. It's fully rechargeable, has a three mile range. Now, I know what you just thought there, three miles, good God, I hope my dog's not over three miles from me. <laughs> but um, what you're gonna end up running to is sometimes there can be interference. It doesn't happen all that often, but the longer your collar is built on a, um, is said to have as far as the signal string goes, the drastically less amount of interference or interference issues that you're going to run into. Yeah, so, so your signal strength will still be really good in that stronger. thicker cover when you've got interference. So with the SPT series, you have 50 levels instead of 16. This is 1450 over here, SPT. You have jump, which allows you to, at the click of a button, go up to that level that kind of gets their attention when you know something bad's about to happen, like chasing a deer or finding a skunk or a porcupine. Speaking of porcupine, we'll mention that here in a second. Um, but you have the jump feature. You have vibrate. Uh, you have Nick and continuous stimulation. And you have the ability to control your beeper function from the transmitter. Other collars, some other collar units or add a beepers out there. You have to call the dog back to you. Then even uh, Tritronics Garmin has an add a beeper that you have to take the back off and adjust little switches in it to change the functions. That's a pain in the butt. But um, so all of those things, the SPT 2430 or 2432, if you want the two dog model, that is, has all the features, is the best unit. That would be my recommendation. Unless you're looking for a little bit of a, a money saver option, you're going to use those uh, nine volt batteries. Now, some of you may do your research and say, hey, he said the 18... 100 series was the way to go for lab stuff, retrieving water work, duck hunting, not just labs, but um, why not use the 1850 that looks like it has a beeper? And with that 1850, you lose vibrate. So in order to keep all the functions that we use on a regular basis, you either need the 1450 or the 2430 series collars. And if you want, like Ethan had mentioned, a second collar system that doesn't have a beeper for when you're only doing waterfall stuff or just even basic obedience around the house and you don't want a big beeper sticking up on the collar, that 1820 is a good option. Or I really, really like the MR1100. The transmitter is a little more compact. It does take a nine volt still. Um, but but they last forever. They I mean, last forever. We use one around the house here and have used one in several training videos. And I don't remember the last time we changed the nine volt in it. Yeah, like I plugged in the collar to charge that, but the nine volt's been good for a long time. I don't months. know when the last time it was it's that we months. changed it. Yeah, and um, it is super simple. It literally has three buttons, so you can't mess up. Like Ethan was saying, that vibrate plus stem that's on the eighteen twenty, just remove that button. Well, with the MR eleven hundred, they did. They did. You mm -hmm. don't have to mess with that one. It's got vibrate momentary and continuous with the 16 levels. You can still add up to three collars, three dogs on it. Um, so you've got a toggle switch that switches between collars, but super simple, nice compact size. Um, and I really, really like that one. Fits young dogs, older dogs all very easily. 
Now, the last thing that I got to mention, because I had, uh, I believe three emails about this today, people saying, we love your stuff. We watch all your videos. We want to order something off your website. Do you have any discount codes that we can use on the store? Um, if you sign up on Patreon in the VIP category, you get a discount code. It's a one-time use deal, but you get it for 15% off any items on the store, bundle all your stuff up, sign up, yeah, use get, the code. Get all your training save. and hunting gear for the year and save 15%. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. So uh, we mentioned uh, that's, that's pretty much everything with the collars, but I did mention uh, porcupines. And if you haven't seen, we have a video and you can go to it standing, just search standing stone and then removing porcupine quills. We show when Muddy got into a porcupine this two last, years ago, two years ago yeah. in the fall. It's been a little while. So two years ago in the fall, she got into a porcupine, didn't get hit horrible, but got enough. I think we pulled like 50 or 60 quills, give or take. And we show step by step on that. Now that video has just a shy of a million views. We are at we're like six thousand views away from it hitting a million, which would be our first video that's ever hit a million views. So go watch it, help boost our video, share it, yeah, for awareness coming into hunting season. Anybody that's interested in seeing it, the only thing that we missed on that because I didn't have one, and I knew I do now have it in my med kit is a essentially a dowel that you can attach. So it helps keep the dog's jaw open, which would prevent the opening, closing, opening, closing. It just would be a wooden dowel that goes in the back of their mouth. And the swallowing and licking. Yeah. Yep. Keeps their mouth open so that we can get those quills out faster. And everyone's going to go, why didn't you go to the vet when you watch it? Well, where we were at hunting, where Ethan was at hunting, that was not an option at that point. We were point. a few hours from a vet clinic, which would have meant a few hours of scratching and knocking out and breaking off quills in her face and breaking off quills. They are going to continue to migrate to the point where they could work their way all the way into her eye or her mouth or her throat um, if they've been broken off. So getting them out sooner rather than later was the better option in that situation. And if you watch the video, it took me, I believe it was a one take straight through video again. I believe it took 10 ish minutes. 10-ish minutes of pulling quills, boom, 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 boom. They were all done and it was over. And then we went back to hunting. Instead of a two-hour trip where she's breaking off quills, causing more damage before you even get to be seen by a vet. Then when we got back to town, uh, you have to even, in order for them to really show up on an x-ray, you had to give it a few days, but we did get her checked out. They didn't find anything else. So we did really well with that. But it is a matter of... Um, you know, it's sometimes, even though it may not be the most enjoyable thing for you or the dog, for that matter, it is the best thing for them. And being aware and comfortable and ready to do that for your dog is a good thing. Definitely. So I wanted to mention a comment that we got from J.S. Keller. I think I had mentioned in one of our last Yawas or another video about finding puppy toys that don't have squeakers because we don't like squeakers for teaching dogs hard mouth and squeaking and rolling and munching behaviors. So it's really hard to find squeaker toys or toys without squeakers. And I said, if you can find a way to kill the squeaker or toys that don't have them, let me know because I'm interested. So this person shared a tip with me, which I'm going to have to try out. They said, I just bought a plush toy duck with 14 squeakers what? sewn in. A little overkill. 14? 14. I definitely think that these squeaker toy producers are a little um, overzealous when it comes to squeaky toys. Um, I perforated 14? Them. Yeah. I perforated them all with 14. A all right, I'm done. Stop it. <laughs> Golly, I was about to punch you. I perforated them all with an ice pick. It takes several holes to eliminate the squeak, but it worked and the plush fur is fine. So I'm going to be ordering an ice pick on Amazon or somewhere and giving this the old testeroo and see how it works for our squeaky toys. I did get the same uh, recommendation from another gentleman that picked up a puppy from us. And he said he actually was in the medical field and he said use a 14 gauge needle. So if you have access to that, it should also work. Okay, so we're going to try a couple of those methods out and see what works best. Maybe we'll even do a video on it. How to kill the squeakers. Uh, 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 I think uh, so. Uh, uh, uh. So thank you guys for your questions. I think that's about all we have time for today. So 
hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and head on over to our porcupine video, removing quills, and watch that one too while you're at it. We will see you in part three.